Three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone, nine for mortal men doomed to die, one for the dark lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. The verse written by J.R.R. Tolkien, supposedly while he was in the bath, to describe the dominion of the One Ring and the other rings of power, has come into sharp focus recently, with the first teaser trailer of Amazon's new Lord of the Rings TV show being revealed. There has been some controversy over the trailer, which I'm not about to add to here, but instead I'm going to look at the real rings of power from history and how they directly and indirectly influence Tolkien's epic story. On a general note, to begin with, the shape of rings holds an ethereal innate power in and of itself. From ring-shaped settlements like the mystical Isle of Avalon, thought by some to have been at Glastonbury Tor, to the concentric rings of the harbour at the mythical island of Atlantis, the shape has occupied prime positions in some of the most perplexing and intriguing mysteries of history and mythology. There is two King Arthur's round table and the sacred geometry of rings as demonstrated at Glastonbury Abbey's octagonal and circular base design. There are also stone circles like Avebury, Stonehenge and the Rollwright stones. An ancient pagan practice in England called passing through and under made use of holes in trees and stones, either natural or man-made, as a healing ritual. Even looking through holes was a ritual for the Norse, with descriptions and art showing that forming a ring shape by bending the arm and placing a hand at the hip formed a portal which could be gazed through to see another world or a god such as Odin. The circular and spiritually significant talks of the ancient Celts and arm rings of Norse warriors see the motif appear again. Sticking with Vikings, the cyclical nature of Norse mythology from the beginning of time to Ragnarok and the birth of a new world sees a more abstract cosmological ring brought into being. The Midgard serpent Jormungandr, a great snake that encircles the world, was one of the chief protagonists in this mythology. Then there are rings in their actual jewellery form. These include Draupnir, or Dripper, a magical ring possessed by Odin that can multiply itself. Every ninth night, eight new rings drip from Draupnir, each one the same size and weight as the original. And the ring called Andvaranaut, which the chaotic and mischievous god Loki stole from Andvari. In revenge, Andvari cursed the ring to bring misery and suffering to whoever possessed it. Loki offloaded Anvaranort to Hreidmar, king of the dwarves, as recompense for having inadvertently killing his son, Uther. Uther's brother, Fafnir, murdered Hreidmar and took the ring, turning into a dragon to guard it. This formed the basis of the gold-obsessed Smaug in Tolkien's The Hobbit. The great hero Sigurd, or Siegfried, later killed Fafnir and took Anvaranort to Brunhild, Following a complex web of ownership echoed by Tolkien's One Ring, Queen Grimhild of the Nibelungs then manipulated Sigurd and Brunhild into marrying her children, bringing the Anvaranort curse into her family. This tale was originally told in the Volsunga saga and later adapted by Richard Wagner into his operatic epic Der Ring des Nibelungen, or Ring Cycle. One can also look to the Norse Sunwheel, a transplanted version of a far older Indo-European mythology linked to the power of the cosmos and the might of the thunder god Thor. In the 6th century, St Kentigern, who was associated with a series of miracles, is reported to have found a powerful ring in a salmon. The story is referenced on the seal of the city of Glasgow, of which Kentigern, also known as Mungo, is a patron. In an Irish variant, Eilil cast the ring into a stream for it to be swallowed by a salmon. A long time later, the ring is discovered by the hero Freich, son of Bevan, a goddess associated with birth and sister of the river goddess Bowen. Irish and Welsh myths also describe Bevan as an underworld goddess. Enchanted rings are a popular feature of European folk magic, with many objects said to be imbued with celestial power to ward off demons or illnesses. One such object is the Bramham Moor Ring, which was found in Yorkshire and dates from the 9th century. It bears a mysterious runic inscription that has yet to be fully deciphered, but is thought by some to be magical. It is one of a number of Anglo-Saxon runic rings, with the Bramham Moor Ring and the King Moor Ring, both bearing a near-identical magic runic formula. On the former, this undeciphered inscription read, Yercru furtkruri thonglesde pontol. 
Despite the message's meaning remaining uncertain, the Erkru portion of the inscription has been claimed by some to be a charm to staunch the flow of blood. Remaining with the Anglo-Saxons, Old English kennings, literary devices that were extended metaphors, included references to ring-givers, which were taken to mean overlords or rulers. In the Anglo-Saxon epic poem Beowulf, King Hrothgar is described as a guardian of ring hordes, alluding to his wealth and power, the power in particular of patronage, the giving of a ring as the bestowing of a slice of that power. That these references appear in Beowulf is significant, as the poem was one of the main influences for Tolkien in crafting his Lord of the Rings. The world Tolkien brought to life was supposed to be a lost mythology of England, both Anglo-Saxon and Celtic, stripped away by the ceaseless cycle of invasions by, ironically, the Norse, whom he used as strong influences in his writing, and later by the Norman French, who sought to diminish Englishness and its ancient traditions and impose the rigid Norman culture. The Normans can be seen as the embodiment of power, brutally demonstrated by their construction of vast castles to subdue their new English subjects. It has to be noted also that, despite Tolkien's stated dislike of allegory, the Shire was a representation of a rural idyll of a lost England. This vanished land was robbed at first by the Normans and later by the ceaseless march of industry and the jarring modernity of the First World War. Magic rings were also part of medieval Jewish esoteric tradition. They are mentioned in the Talmud and Midrash. One such example is Solomon's magical ring, which had a number of legendary powers. This included making him a master of animals, able to speak with beasts and giving him the ability of being all-knowing. The ring was said to have bore a special sigil that sealed genies into bottles. In Kabbalah, the Ilan, or Tree of Life, is represented as a series of rings called Sephiroth, connected by lines that represent different aspects of God. Practitioners use these lines to connect with the Almighty, and some believe this union could help them to influence the material world. The concept of Ouroboros from Greek magical tradition and associated with alchemy is represented as a snake eating its own tail. It symbolises life, death and rebirth, with the potent symbol also linked with transmigration of the soul. The significance of rings is present in Christian practices too. For Catholics, the sacrament of marriage is a public sign that an individual is giving themselves totally to another person. The rings used in weddings are a visual representation of this relinquishment of self. And the fisherman's ring, part of the Pope's official regalia, is a signet ring used to seal and authorise official Vatican documents. A custom that dates back from at least the medieval period sees Catholics kissing the ring when meeting the Pope to demonstrate their devotion. These are just some of the real rings of power from history which Tolkien either drew on directly or would undoubtedly have been aware of when writing The Lord of the Rings. It is perhaps one of the main reasons why the story is so resonant. It is almost innate in the human condition that rings, both real or conceptual, hold a spiritual power in the collective consciousness. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. Thank you for watching.